In this video, I want to show you how you can create custom data labels using the dynamic format strings feature in Power BI. We're going to go through how you can use it to add some details to your charts, like showing the variance comparing against previous months, budgets or targets. And we're also going to look at how you can add symbols or colors to make your values very easy to read. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the Power BI team has released this new feature, the dynamic format strings, which I covered a few times ago already in previous videos, looking at the typical use cases of when you'd use this and when it would be useful. So check those out if you haven't yet. But in a nutshell, this feature essentially lets us create some some rules and make it dynamic based on some values and based on some calculations that we set in our measures. But did you know that you have an option to fully customize it so that you can show anything you want within these labels? Let me show you. So here's the sample reports that I prepared for you today. It's a subset of our favorite data sets, the Northwind database, which is a international company that sells goods like uh, grocery products. And uh, I've pulled some tables and columns just for the purposes of this demo. So we have a few things here, some information about the orders themselves, like how much were ordered, what the products were within these orders, and what categories those products are. We also have uh, when those orders were made and and a calendar table so that we can sort this by month, which um, we're going to show in a second. I've also pre-created a measures folders here with one measure sales, which basically just calculates the total sales by multiplying the unit price by against the quantity. So let's say we want to create a bar chart that visualizes the total sales every month. If I just drag it the month here and drag in the sales, now it's a table, we'll convert it into a bar chart here. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. I'm not going to do too much customization here. I just want to enable the data label so we can see the, the values. Label density to 100 so that we can see more. And I'm just going to make it slightly smaller like this. And maybe we can also hide the Y axis something like this. So here, if you pay attention to the actual bar chart itself, it gives us on a monthly basis, the values of how much we've sold on a monthly basis. And obviously month on month, you can see the bars going up and down. So from this month, 30K to 27K, we know that's about the 3K difference uh, going down. But what if we wanted a quick way for our users to know what that percentage is? And this is where the dynamic format strings can help us. So let's start by creating the measure, which calculates the variance between the current month and the previous month, which I'm hoping that you're all quite familiar with. I'm going to just change it quickly to categorical so we can see those uh, months as a whole per bar. I'm going to go to the data part here. We're going to right click, create new measure. I'm going to name this sales versus previous month. We're going to create a few variables here. So first we're going to create a previous month, which we'll simply use to calculate the previous month using the sales measure as our expression. And then we will use previous month like this. So that will give us the value of the previous month. And then what we're simply going to do is do a divide. So we're going to divide sales by previous month minus one. So this converted into a percentage will give us the variance across all of those different months. So let's copy. So just so that we can preview this in a table, since it's much easier to do it like that, we'll convert this into a table like this. And now if we add the sales versus previous month, you can see that we have some values there. Now it's not exactly percentage yet, so we'll convert it into a percentage like this. And you can see how those values change. The only thing that I would like to um, make sure that doesn't happen is that to that it shows the values if there are no sales values in those months. So I just want to make sure that instead of minus 100% here, we just make it to zero. So that's pretty easy to do. So here in our measure, we'll just wrap it with an if statement. 
like this. And then for the expression that we want in the if statement, we want to say if the sales and previous month, then do the divide. So what this does is it checks that sales and previous month is not empty. Otherwise, if then do the divide, otherwise leave it blank. So now what happens is it will give us those values if both of those values are not blank. So now that we've got the variance between the sales and the previous month, which is what we want to visualize in our bar chart, let's now try to replace the values that we see here, the labels that we see in our bar charts with this variance instead of the actual value. So right here, we'll select the, the sales measure here. And then under format, you'll need to select dynamic. Now it will break. Um, and that's because Power BI has sort of auto filled the format there, which is what we don't want. We'll just leave it blank like this. And that should bring it back to normal. So this is where we will create a sort of our, our measure, our calculation to replace these values into the ones that we have here in our new measure. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable for our symbol because we want to show a plus if it's a positive change and then a minus if it's a negative. But you can have whatever symbol you want to use here. Uh, for me, I'm going to just keep it simple. So if the sales versus previous month is greater than zero, then I'll use a plus like this. And then we'll leave it blank, the else, because if it's a negative, it will show the negative sign anyway. And then now we'll do a return. And uh, for the dynamic format strings, it's important that it always returns a string because otherwise it will give you some uh, weird errors. So the trick is to use these four double quotes. Um, so we'll just add that at the beginning of our return statement. So we'll say end symbol and the sales versus previous month. So you'll see that it looks a little bit weird. I mean, that's because it's taken the the literal value of those of that sales versus previous month without converting it into a percentage. So we'll just wrap this with a format like this. And then at the end, we will just use the hash percentage that should convert it to a percentage. And there you go. So it gives you the values of what that difference is now for month on month. So you will see that, for example, for August 1996, we have a 12% decrease in our sales, uh, which gives you a positive or negative symbol at the front based on if it's a positive or a negative change month on month. And obviously you don't have to stick with this. Um, you can add the value along with the percentage change as well. I just found that a method a bit too cluttered. So if I add, uh, let's say, for example, and here, and we can just add the sales for that month. And then uh, we'll add a little bit of a spacing like this, like a pipe, for example. And we'll add a format here, just so that we can add a, a pound sign and then a hash like this, which will add that value that we, we sort of want. But the thing is, as you can see, because we have a lot of bars, you can have that as an option, um, but you'll just have to play around with what fits your current needs. Now, in my case, because I have a lot of bars and I don't want to clutter it too much, I, I just remove it, to be honest. So like this is much cleaner. So now that we have the values in our labels, it's now time to add some coloring to this variances because we can see the plus and minuses, but it doesn't really pop out to say if it's a positive or negative change. So we can do that quickly. We don't really actually need to write any measures or extra calculations here. We can simply go to the data labels and then under the values, instead of using gray, we'll use the FX icon. Now here you can use a gradient or rules. It's totally up to you. Um, we can use gradients for now. Um, we'll base it on the sales versus previous month measure, and then we'll add a middle color. So we'll use a sort of rag value here. So a high value, a positive value would be, let's say blue. And then the negative value would be red and then middle would be amber. Now you can't really see it too easily. And probably maybe it's better if I use something more prominent, like a bright green, right? something like this. 
So here you go. So as you can see now with this gradient, it lets you easily see based on the, the darkness of the font, how severe that change is. So you can see that the most severe change is this 85% decrease from April to May, which is a very steep decline. Whereas um, as you can see, then the 69% increase here from November to December as the highest increase that we've had month on month. So now that you know how to set and create variances based on comparing it against previous months. Now I want to show you how you can compare it against a certain budget or target. We're going to follow the similar, the same sort of steps with some slight variances. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new measure. We're going to use the same measure or basically the same logic as we did in the sales versus previous month, except obviously against the target. And actually, before we do that, it's probably easier if we create uh, what I wanted, which is a numeric range parameter first. So let's say we want to set a target of about 50,000 pounds for every month. And we want to show the variance here in our bar chart. How far of a difference is the current month based on that certain target? And I want that target to be movable as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to a numeric range. So I want to show you how to do that. So under modeling, you'll need to go to new parameter numeric range. I'm going to name this one target. We'll leave it as whole number. Maximum, we'll do 100,000 like this. And we'll do 1,000 increments like this. So now we have a target here that is movable. Just adjust this a little bit. As you can see, that changes. So now in our bar chart here, we're going to go to more options. And then under reference lines, we're going to add a line and we're going to change it based on a constant line. The constant line, you can set the value based on a conditional value. So we'll use the field value from the uh, numeric range that we've created. So the target value here. So as you can see, it adds a reference line here. We're going to just make it a little bit prominent. So we're going to make it red, transparency to zero. Um, and yeah, we'll leave it like that. So what you'll notice is that as I adjust this slider, so does the target. So that changes as well. So that's the first bit done. Now let's create a copy of this sales versus previous month as a new measure. So I'm going to copy new measure like this, paste, and then we will change this to sales versus target. So previous month, it doesn't make sense anymore. So I'm going to change that to prev. It doesn't really matter. It's just so that I remember what that's for. Um, and instead of calculate, we will basically just get the value from that target measure that was created for us, basically. So that will calculate the variance for us like it did before, except we didn't have to do the majority of the work. So now that that's done, we'll just go straight to the, uh, the sales measure here, and we'll go back to the format, uh, dynamic format string, and then we'll change this reference to use the sales versus target, the one that we've just created. There we go. So now you will see that as I move this target, the numbers change based on how far they are from that target. Now, I think we've missed the, something here, which is the color. So I'm going to just change that quickly. So under more options, once again, uh, under the, yeah, not there, it's under values, data labels, under values, the colors, FX, it needs to be based on our new sales versus target. So just click that, hit OK. So I think it's still a little bit incorrect. So I'm just going to change this to use instead of gradient, we'll use rules instead. So we're going to use numbers like this. If it's greater than zero, we want to show it as green. Just going to choose whatever green here. If it's less than zero, then we'll show it as red. It's probably too bright, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea. Yeah, that is way too bright. So something like this. Here you go. So now, as you can see, as I change that target, those that are below it, so 
But obviously, all of those values um, change and cal calculate how far that month sales is compared to the target. And then it changes the color. If it's below the target, it shows as red. And then if it's above, it shows as green. And all of those recalculate as we update this target. Pretty easy. And that's really it for this video. I hope that's given you some new tricks that you can use with this dynamic uh, format strings that was just released by the Power BI team. If you wanted to know more about the dynamic format strings and some of the typical ways that you can use it, go check out my video on it covering you know the full lengths and some use cases of when you could and you would like to use it. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't. Turn out to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.